Hello, and welcome to today's trainer education webinar, Breakthrough Creativity, How to Use Your Talents to Gain a Competitive Advantage, hosted by HRDQ and presented by Dr. Lynn Levesque. Today's webinar will last approximately an hour. Do stay tuned at the conclusion of the broadcast for an exclusive offer. Now, before we begin, note that there is, it may be labeled as a question and answer button on your screen. It could be called a chat box. It's usually found in the upper right-hand corner. You want to use that area throughout the webinar. You can submit any questions that you have. And then we will either answer those questions as we receive them by email after the session or during our live Q&A with Lynn at the end. My name is Sarah Montgomery, and I will moderate today's webinar. I'm in business development for HRDQ, a publisher of research-based training solutions that improve the performance of individuals, teams, and organizations. Today's presenter is Lynn Levesque. She is an expert in the field of creativity and leadership with over 20 years of experience consulting, training, and researching. She is the author of Breakthrough Creativity, Achieving Top Performance Using the Eight Creative Talents as well as numerous articles and Harvard Business School cases for the Harvest Business Review and the Sloan Management Review. Lynn holds an MBA from the University of California at Berkeley and a doctorate in creativity from the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. Thank you so much for joining us today, Lynn. Thanks, Sarah, and welcome to all of you who are participating in today's webinar. It's great to see so many people who've chosen to spend some time exploring my favorite topic, which is creativity. What I want to do in this webinar is to take you on a journey to explore the creative potential that lies within you. In doing so, I want to provide you with a structured, practical framework for identifying your creative strengths and figuring out just what you should do next to explore all that is, lies within you. The focus will be primarily at the individual level, on you, but obviously you can use this information with your coaching clients, with developing leaders, with your employees, with your teams, and in training sessions to help others identify their creative strengths. I'm first going to give you some background, and then we'll get into the framework. There is so much to be gained from exploring your creative potential, especially if you think of creativity not just as an end, but as a means to many different ends. You're probably already familiar with many of the extraordinary co contributions that creativity will bring you at work in terms of better decisions, um, better designs, process improvements, breakthrough technologies. But what you may not be as familiar with are the personal benefits that come from being creative. Obviously, in this world today, you're much more marketable if you know how to creatively solve problems and do and see things differently. But did you also know that being creative is energizing and builds your self-esteem? There is a defined link between understanding how you are creative and a higher level of self-esteem. And then with practice, you build confidence in your creativity and in the process become even more creative and garner more self-esteem for yourself. So it's, it's one of those virtuous circles. Developing your creativity also strengthens your cap capacity to be more open, flexible, resilient, and agile. All important skills for dealing with the unstructured, ill-defined, and ambiguous challenges and complexities of our world these days. So there's no question that the benefits are far-ranging. But the problem is, the problem is, the slide doesn't want to move forward. Hello? Oh, sorry. The, so the problem is, that many people don't gain these benefits because they don't see themselves as creative or don't know how to become more creative. Too often creativity is seen as magical, mystical, and belonging to a select few. Creativity is magical and mystical, but it is definitely misunderstood. 
And that's because there is a lot of confusing and conflicting information about creativity. It's hard to see yourself as creative when you're comparing yourself against geniuses like Einstein, Edison, Michelangelo, or Marie Curie. Or you may believe that creativity is only about thinking outside the box or being off the wall, or that it's a right brain thing and you are definitely left brain, no matter whatever that means. Uh, or maybe you look at, uh, you've taken a creativity test and didn't score very high or flunked it the way I did, or were told by a teacher that you aren't creative, which a friend of mine was. This is a problem. Everyone is being asked to be more creative, to think and do things differently, but if you don't see yourself as creative, you and your organization may be missing many of its benefits. So today, we're going to address these issues and see creativity as it should be seen, which means I'm going to have to debunk some of these myths and misunderstandings you might have about creativity so that you can develop a stronger sense of your creative potential and would be able to apply this new knowledge to working with leaders for their development, to pro for working with teams, working with others to be more creative in their problem solving and strategic planning. So first, before we move forward, I would like to take a poll and get the temperature of how you feel, the temperature of the audience to see how you feel about yourself as creative. Sarah's going to open up the poll and unfortunately you can't see it necessarily as the results come in, but I'd like you to answer yourself, are you creative? So if you could answer whether you think you're very creative, somewhat creative, not sure, or that you've never thought of yourself as creative. I'm waiting for some results here. <laughs> Okay, Lynn, do you see the results that have come in? No, I don't. I just All see right. the quick poll. Let's go ahead and um, let's see. Let's see. Do you see them now? Uh, now, now I see them. Does okay, everyone else? Sorry. Yes, Does everyone, everyone else can now see them too. Okay, great. So it looks like we have um, a mix here, although um, a preponderance of people feel that they are ve either very creative or somewhat creative, which I think probably reflects the audience that we have today because as trainers and as consultants, you need to be more creative. Uh, generally, I don't quite see the skew towards, uh, in my workshops and research, I don't tend to see this skew. Um, I do see it with a younger group, that there are more people who feel that they are creative or somewhat creative and um, don't see as many people saying that they're not as creative. So what we have here today is a group of people who um, are either young or very young at heart um, and have been uh, experiencing their own creativity. So our challenge today is to help you figure out how to share that sense of yourself as creative with others. So let's go on to the next um, slide here. One of the reasons one of the reasons you may not see yourself as creative or aren't sure that you are creative is that there are many different theories and approaches to creativity. Obviously, many of us do see ourselves as creative who are on the webinar today, so for this, I'm sure you have found that there are many people who don't think that they are creative. My key principles of the great breakthrough creativity approach is that we are all creative. But in order to encompass the fact that we are all creative and that we are many different ways of being creative, creativity needs to have a broader definition than it usually it receives because there is no one best way to be creative. There are a wide variety of ways and there's no one ideal way. So now what I'd like to do is, and hopefully I'll be able to do this, except that now I've, there I am, okay, sorry. Um, I'd like to open up the questions. When you were taking that poll, how did you define, why did you define yourself as being very creative? What definition in your mind do you have? How do you define 
creativity because one of the issues is that that keeps people from seeing, seeing themselves as creative is their definition. So since your definition um, will define, will impact how you feel about yourself and others as creative, I'd like to see what you think about as your definition of creativity. I tend to see um, a lot of answers come in as thinking differently, the ability to do things differently, thinking in color, um, think, being able to creatively, see, um, creatively solve problems, seeing things that others haven't seen, doing things in different ways, problem solving as I just said. Um, there are also sometimes people will say thinking outside of the box, we've got that. So there are many, as you can see, there are many different definitions for how we define creativity. And not all of them recognize that there are many different ways to be creative. Not everyone knows how to think out of the box. And in fact, I've seen articles that say it's time to start thinking inside the box. Um, what I'd like to do in this webinar is share the definition, the breakthrough creativity definition that is based upon my experience and my research, including the latest findings with from neuroscientists who are studying the brain and creativity. And that definition is the ability to consciously produce different and valuable results. We're not alike in our results because there's no one perfect way to be creative. You may not have developed your creativity to the same degree as others have, but it's there. And it can be developed. We, some of us, are born with more creativity bones in our body, but the rest of us all can develop our creativity. Now there's just a few points I'd like to make about this definition. We, the results don't have to be tangible. They can be intangible, like creating a safe and culture where new ideas are welcome, resolving conflict, leading a team to reach creative heights, or leading a life creatively when many obstacles are thrown your way. However, to be considered creative, your results do need to be different. That is different from what you've done before. Your results don't have to be original to the world or change the course of business or science or history. Few actually do. For some, of course, who exhibit what could be called transformational creativity or groundbreaking creativity, like Charles Darwin or Steve Jobs, they do. But for most people, creativity is a bit more down to earth and still incredibly important. Just being different, however, is not enough. To be considered creative, your results need to be valuable. That means being useful and appropriate. The results might, must satisfy the needs of the situation or challenge, which could be your need to express yourself. You may not always be successful the first time because being creative often means learning from mistakes, building on them through trial and error, finding an answer, but eventually the results do have to work and solve the problem or the challenge. Otherwise, it's going to end up just as an interesting idea. The last point I want to make here is about being consciously producing different and valuable results. You must know yourself well enough to be able to call up your creativity whenever you need it. Creativity is not a flash in the pan. I call that being lucky. <laughs> but you need to be conscious about your process. Now, you'll notice that this definition might encompass what some consider innovation. In the breakthrough creativity approach, individuals are creative and organizations are innovative building on the creativity of their employees. In other words, innovation is a sort of a group activity or process that organizations can design and implement. Creativity is something that each of us has within us. So let's go on focusing on creativity and leave any questions about that definition to the end. Now when you study creativity, as long as I have, you'll find that to be able to consciously produce different and valuable results requires perception, collecting data, and judgment, making decisions about that data. 
scientists, inventors, and artists, and designers, and creative leaders don't just sit around brainstorming ideas, they do something with them. They produce symphonies, novels, paintings, inventions, patents, new organizations, products, and processes. Now, creativity also, besides involving perception and judgment, involves action and reflection. It's about process and product, doing and being. For example, when artists get an idea for a painting, they have to figure out how to put it on campus, sorry, canvas. <laughs> then they will paint some of it, and then they'll step back for reflection before painting more. Writers do the same thing, so do scientists. It's a reflection and action. It's acting and doing. It's seeing and doing. It's all about balance. So if everyone is creative, and creativity requires acting and reflecting, collecting data, and doing something with that information, how do you go about getting in touch with your own creative powers? Well, there's good news. You're lucky. You have creative talents within you, capabilities and strengths that allow you to collect data, act and reflect, and produce creative results and contributions. You just need to identify and then develop these talents, which we're going to do in just a minute. I just want to give you a little bit more background. The creative talents, which I'm going to describe to you, are built on the work of Swiss psychologist Carl Jung, who believed that the creative instinct exists in each and every one of us. In observing his patients and others, Jung came to realize that there are patterns to the way that they looked at the world and then made decisions about the data they saw or the information they took in. He determined that there were four functions, sensing and intuiting for collecting data and thinking and feeling for making decisions, as well as two orientations to the world, the outer world or extroverted and the inner world or introverted. The combinations produced his eight psychological types. You may be familiar with the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator as well as HRDQ's Personal Style Inventory because both of them are also based on the work of Jung. Jung, Jung meant his typology to be like a compass. And this is very important. It's not meant to put you in a box or what Jung called drawers, but to give you direction on your journey towards self-awareness and creativity. When you combine Jung's psychological types with the breakthrough creativity framework that we've been talking about, you get eight creative talents, eight different ways, eight different ways that we take in and process data that make distinct contributions and produce a variety of creative results. And those talents are the adventurer, explorer, navigator, and visionary talents for data collecting, and pilot, diplomat, poet, and inventor talents for decision making. I want to make a couple of more points before I start describing the talents. All eight talents are equally creative. No one is better than any other one. All these talents produce creative results, just different ones. And we have all these talents within us. Although we do tend to develop preferences for a couple of them. But the, these talents impact your creativity differently. They impact the way you solve problems, make decisions, develop strategies, make plans, approach innovation, and lead. Just want to take another poll. Whoops. We skipped. Thank you. Uh, poll, how are you creative from a data collecting perspective? I would like to, when you take in data, do you like to research on your own? Do you see shapes, textures? Do you like to generate ideas? Or do you get your best um, inventive ideas when you're off on your own? I see from the polls as they're coming in um, that we have a, um, a skewed here. We've got 
more people who like to research on their own, um, and then we have several who like to generate ideas with other people or are off on their own, and not very many who see details in shapes, colors, textures, and sounds. Can we see the, the poll? Can everybody see the poll now? So we have 40% who like to do the collecting data on their own. Um, we have an, a large number who combine like to generate ideas with other people and get their most inventive ideas when they're off on their own. And as I said, a smaller amount that are into shapes and textures. And that is pretty much the, uh, a typical response. So what I'd like to do now is go to um, the adventurer talent. I'm going to start digging into these talents in more detail. And as I do, um, because the process of producing different and valuable results involves solving problems and managing change, among other things, I'll address those aspects of each talent as well as its creative contributions. Now, not many of you, only 9% of you saw, would identify with the adventure talent, the adventurer talent. Uh, the adventurer talent tends to be more spontaneous. They enjoy the five senses, sees all de the details in shapes, colors, sounds of life, um, and they like to be on stage at least some of the time. That creative talent comes out in terms of quick responses to crises and in the ability to skillfully handle anything that's thrown their way. Firefighters, the first responders in, um, I live in Boston, so on Monday we had some, um, the need for first responders. And those first responders who instinctively knew what to do are very typical of those with the adventurer talent. Basketball players, um, improv comedians, Photographers are also examples of individuals using this talent. They can think on their feet and do whatever needs to be done. This curious, fun-loving talent enjoys solving problems with experimentation and clever improvisation. They tend to ask questions about what's happening right now in the present. How can we solve this problem immediately are typical questions that they're going to ask. When it comes to change, this talent or individuals who prefer this talent will welcome change because they get bored easily and, it's usually, and they're usually quite eager to go with the flow. Interestingly, as the poll shows, um, many people with this adventure talent don't tend to work inside organizations. <laughs> they tend to either be on their own or um, be out where they're using their bodies more. The challenge for these this talent is that their love of life and enjoyment of solving crises can cause them to get to so caught up in the moment that they forget about getting things done. Now we'll go on to the talent that so many more of you preferred. You tend to like to research and collect the, your data and facts on your own. Um, you like to see things in detail under a microscope if, microscope, if you will. I call the, this talent, the, their creativity, the pragmatic adapter, because its creativity comes out in its ability to build on what others have done. This talent's focus on details will provide grounding for a team, ensuring achievement of creative results, a critical component of the creative process. This talent doesn't often see itself as being creative, but it definitely is. Um, and if you look at researchers, impressionist painters like Monet and Mary Cassatt, or scientists like Charles Darwin, they've exhibited use of this talent in their persistence and willingness to keep, keep after the fact, keep doing more and more experiments to see details in new lights. I think Thomas Edison was probably using this talent when he invented the light bulb. The navigator talent will apply facts, experience, and research when it comes to solving problems. It will ask questions such as, does what's happening now relate to something that has happened in the past, and what, do we, what did we do about it then, and would that work now? 
While often seen as resisting change, in reality this talent just needs to understand the reasons for the change and the path to implementing the change. The challenge for this talent is that creativity often involves risk and doing things differently, and this talent can be un uh, uncomfortable with uncertainty and overly cautious. What's throwing me for a loop right now is that the response, and we can deal with this more in the question and answer period, is that the response for so many of you is that you do feel that you are creative, and yet so many of you also uh, love to research on your own and collect data on your own. So I've got to sort of process that. That's um, a little bit of a, um, of a disconnect. But I'll think about that, and we can answer that in the question and answer period. Now, if you responded to the question, the poll, and said that you love to generate ideas with others, your favorite talent is probably the explorer talent, whose creativity comes out as the energetic catalyst that can brainstorm and come up with new ideas at the drop of a hat. This is the talent in people who are called creatives, folks who are full of endless possibilities and are all about new ideas, discovery, change, and opportunities. These are the people who often are found in what are called creative departments, like the marketing people or product designers. Examples of individuals using this talent include Walt Disney, um, advertising greats like Alex Osborne, who actually came up with the whole brainstorming process, and Virgin Group founder Richard Branson. This talent will use a sixth sense to address problems from beyond the five senses and will search out all sorts of options and alternatives for the near future by asking, what would happen if, how might we, what ways could, in what ways could we think about this differently? Change is this talent's middle name, and it will frequently promote change, sometimes just for change's sake. One of the challenges this talent needs to face is that it usually is able to get great ideas and get projects started, but is often not interested in sticking around to see them get implemented, which means that their creative results may not always be achieved. Now, like the explorer, the visionary is also a future-oriented. Um, but if you said that you tend to like to, your, you get your best, most inventive ideas when you're off on your own, or in bed, in the bath, or the shower, or in the car, or commuting, for example, then your favorite talent is the visionary talent. The insightful, futuristic creativity of this talent comes out in its ability to integrate knowledge across many different areas to ask big questions and make unusual connections. It can create a counterintuitive vision of a far-off future like prophets and mystics or creators of science fiction like James Cameron or creative strategic planners. The visionary talent will address problems by asking about long-range objectives and will take a systemic view of problems. They might ask, what does this mean for the long term? What might be the impact not only in this department but throughout the organization? This talent, like the explorer talent, tends to welcome change, but not only for necessarily just for change's sake, but also for the new learning that it will pr provide. Often with dealing with the future, this talent is challenged to consider relevant facts and details about how to bring others along. Reality is not necessarily its strength. It's, it sometimes lives too much in the future. So those are the four data collecting talents. Did you find a favorite data collecting talent that sounds like you? If not, we can address that in the question and answers uh, section. What I'd like to do now, Sarah, is take another poll. Because remember, I said that to be fully creative, you need not only to come up with ideas, but you also need to do something with them. So what's your favorite approach to making decisions, to turning creative ideas into action and results? And yes, you can only choose one. 
So we're getting the results in. Many of you like to talk to others to help make up your mind. On the same, the same token, many of you also like to think out loud to organize your decisions. But we have a good balance of um, this more so than in the other poll. So let's go on. And as you can see, 35% oops, sorry. 35% um, talk to others to make up their minds. 21% focus on their own values. 28 like to organize, think out loud, and the others in 16% develop in their minds, develop categories in their minds. So let's go on and we'll talk about the pilot talent. My system is not as fast as it should be. Sorry, here's the pilot talent. If you tend to think out loud and enjoy working with others, but you'd like to clarify your thinking and decide what to do by thinking out loud, your accent, when you do that, you're accessing your pilot talent. This talent, with its analytically strategic creativity, is great at coming up with new designs and plans. The talent comes in very handy for, with project managers and planners who need to steer a team working on a new project by setting goals and objectives, managing to overcome obstacles, asking tough questions, and focusing on improvement and getting things accomplished. This talent's ability to analyze, categorize, and organize helps it achieve creative results as new organizational designs or strategies. It will attack problems with logical critique and will often play, play devil's advocate. It will, adjust, it will address change as a project, thinking through how to structure and how to get it off the ground, how to get it implemented. Albert Sloan, who reorganized GM almost a century ago, was probably using this talent, as was the designer of management by objectives, and those folks who brought us re-engineering. A challenge for individuals favoring this talent is that they can be so eager to get things done that they take action before collecting enough data. They tend to prefer to jump to conclusions when often there's more data to collect. They need to remember that creativity is as much about process and generating ideas as it is in getting results. Now, like the pilot, the inventor tends also to be objective and logical. Its creativity comes out in its um, ability to shift paradigms. So if you answered that you tend to develop a blueprint or a map in your mind when making decisions, then you probably prefer the inventor talent, which is um, the least represented of talents today. The inventor talent as I said, will shift par uh, paradigms and like the pilot talent is logical and analytical. The difference is that this talent tends to do this processing privately in their mind. Its creative results come out in the building of categories, conceptual frameworks, mental maps and models that make everything fit together and that will provide insights that enable discoveries of new solutions. Scientists, architects like Frank Lloyd Wright, philosophers like Kant, Nietzsche, and Ayn Rand would access this talent when they created their designs and frameworks for better understanding or to shift thinking. <clears throat> Sorry. This talent will attack problems with a very log logical, analytical approach, asking questions about principles and models to use to analyze the problem and possible solutions. So long as the change makes sense, individuals with this talent will go with the flow. One challenge they do tend to have is that they, this talent can cause you to see the world as black and white, and most creative solutions require a both-and approach. <coughs> Sorry. Now you might have answered that you prefer to ask others what they think or feel before making up your mind. And that's what the majority of people, or the, the biggest group of people here, d agreed to. Sorry. <coughs> I've had a cold for a long time, so <clears throat> this is not good. 
You might have answered that you prefer to ask others what they think or feel before making up your mind. If so, you probably have a lot of the diplomat talent in you. As the collaborative negotiator, this talent focuses on working with others to achieve common goals and build a strong team. Their creative results can be seen in the way they deal with political problems and inevitably come up, that inevitably come up in implementing creative ideas. They are great at selling the solutions, working with others to get the change <clears throat> or the idea or innovation adopted. They also make creative contributions by providing a safe place for others to share their ideas. <clears throat> which is a very important piece of the creativity puzzle. Individuals identified as caring or inspiring leaders use this talent, <clears throat> such as Martin Luther King, Jr., Mahatma Gandhi, Nelson Mandela, Eleanor Roosevelt. Many salespeople have this talent as their favorite talent, <clears throat> and some politicians. Now, when it comes to problems, individuals who prefer the diplomat talent will listen to the views of others and try to build consensus around the possible solution. And that when it comes to change, they're going to want to know what, how the results of a new product or solution will affect users, other stakeholders, or existing relationships. <coughs> Their ability to build consensus, <coughs> sorry, while a strong positive in leaders, can also be a challenge when it comes to creative discussions and debates. Conflict, <clears throat> which the diplomat talent tends to shy away from, is an inevitable part of the exploration of, the many, of many different perspectives. <clears throat> if you indicated that when making decisions you tend to follow your own compass, you tend to think of your <clears throat> own values and ideals to guide you, then you probably prefer the poet talent. Through its thoughtful counselor creativity, it provides an ethical backbone which can remind others to reflect and focus on what is truly important. It also treasures grace and elegance when it comes to developing creative solutions. Examples of this talent include Emily Dickinson, and Shakespeare, who ask all those tough questions about the meaning of life, Anita Roddick, the founder of Body Shop, and Tom Chappell, who founded Toms of Maine, and others among the socially responsible leadership group. When dealing with problems, the poet talent will generally ask questions about the people involved, how the possible solutions fit in with the company's or the team's values, what's really important. Its concern for people will often cause it to pause when considering change because of the impact the change may have on others. And one possible area to watch out for with this talent is a stubborn inability to see points of view that contradict its values and ideals. So did you find a decision-making talent that you prefer? We have one more poll to take before we um, sort of close out this. Have we, the discussion about creativity, had any impact on your thinking of yourself? Now, many of you already thought you were creative or were somewhat creative, but I'm now asking you, are you sh more sure of your creativity than ever? Um, are you more creative than you first thought? Do you have a better appreciation, but you still have a lot to learn? Or are you still not sure? Well, I'm glad to see that you've got a lot that, um, <clears throat> as it's coming in, there's people who are more sure, uh, some people who realize that they're more creative and they have a better appreciation than they first thought, and some who are still not sure. For those who still have a lot to learn and not, not sure, that's why I've developed the 16-item Breakthrough Creativity Profile and Workshop to help those who need to go into more detail to identify their talents and to help others identify their talents. Since finding your creative identity, your creative talents is, is I, hold on, um, sorry. Um, since finding your creative talents is really important in this world, 
uh, it, I might suggest that you purchase the individual participant guide to learn how you are creative and to explore the breakthrough creativity approach in much more detail. Now that we have a better appreciation for the eight creative talents and their results, I'd like to share with you some possible next steps on your creative journey to grow your creativity and to help others grow their creativity as well. First, be sure you appreciate and honor your creative strengths and the contributions that those talents make to you and to make sure that you appreciate these talents in others. Remember we are all creative and that there are many different ways no, and no one best or ideal way to produce different and valuable results the real definition of creativity. Next, you need to figure out what you need to do to be even more creative by defining your creative process. Because once you know you are creative and how you are creative and what you need to do to bring that creativity out, time no longer stands in the way of your being creative. You might need music around you. You might need quiet. You might need plants, green plants. You might need order. You might need chaos. You might need aromatherapy, certain flowers or smells. You might need exercise, or there's a particular kind of food that you like, or a time of day. As with the talents, there's no one best way that fits all, and no one process that's going to work for all the talents, and no one best set of tools or techniques either. One size does not fit all when it comes to figuring out your process. Next, you want to figure out what can get in the way of your being your creative best. These obstacles could be organizational, they could be cultural, they could be physical, like lack of sleep. But for many, they're also emotional, like our own inner critic. For most of us, that critic, that need to be perfect and to have others like us, can be the biggest block. Because being creative inevitably means making mistakes and generating conflict and getting feedback from others. The fourth step you can take is to ensure that you have the right knowledge base. As I said earlier, being creative is not about a flash in the pan. While luck helps, you need to know your subject in order to be creative about it on a conscious basis. Of course, at the same time, you don't want to let that knowledge keep you from thinking outside of the box or outside of those boundaries. So again, it's about balance. And the last step that I might suggest for developing your creative competency and creative talents is to figure out what you need for support and motivation. Being creative requires courage because you are being different and outside the norm. You need to be persistent to achieve your creative results. So passion and energy about your ideas really help. You'll need support along the way as you battle obstacles. And you need to figure out where, how to keep that passion and energy alive. If you are a team leader or are working with team leaders, be sure to recognize the importance of creating an environment where folks feel comfortable expressing their ideas no matter how different. Speaking of teams, I'd like to add a word, just a word about creativity on teams. Mining the creative potential of a team calls for more than just putting individuals together on a project. For a team's creativity to blossom and turn great ideas into new and valuable results, a team needs to recognize and honor the contribution of the different perspectives that the creative talents of the team members bring to the team. Understanding a team's creative breakthrough creativity profile, that, which is the sum of all the talent profiles of team members, will help the team reach new, higher, new and higher levels of creativity. Knowledge of the team's profile can also help the team develop strategies for dealing with challenges that a particular mix of talents or lack of talents on the team may present. For example, a team with members who favor the diplomat talent might be averse to conflict, which is needed to get all ideas out on the table when you're dealing with solving creative, creative, creatively solving problems. 
or a team with predominantly pilot talents might be in a rush to get results without generating sufficient options. I worked with one team that was predominantly pilots and they were ready to start working on their presentation at their first meeting of a six-month project because they were so eager to get to those results. Or a team that favors the navigator talent might be stuck with coming up with great ideas for the future. So understanding the team's creative talents is extremely important for it to reach its creative potential. Understanding the talents can also help the team improve its ability to give honest feedback since the talents supply an easy language to talk about challenges and different perspectives. They can also serve as a tool, similar to the six hats of, of Edward de Bono, to generate new ideas and perspectives. How, they might ask, how would an adventurer look at that? How would a, a poet look at that problem, for example? So awareness of the team's creative talents can thus help the team break through to more powerful interactions and positive creative results and have some fun along the way. I feel so strongly about creativity in individuals and on teams that I've developed profiles and workshops for individuals to identify their favorite talents and a te technique for team members to then identify their team profile as well. I don't want to end today's webinar without giving you a chance to jot down on your handouts or wherever some ideas on what you might want to do next with this information. Take a minute to, to think about what you could do today or tomorrow to further develop your own creativity. Just one step you could take. That might include strengthening your favorite talent, coming to appreciate it more, or accessing a talent you don't use very often for new perspectives or to break through a block you might be dealing with. Or maybe there's something you want to do with your team, with your clients, or with your organization that would add more fun. <laughs> the power of creativity is awesome. Developing creative confidence and competency can lead to increased ability to handle challenges and gives you more resilience, flexibility, and buoyancy for coping with constant change. Your talents can help you weather any storm. Seeing yourself as creative is thus vital for a healthy and productive life. Our journey, our voyage for now is over, but I hope through introducing you is through introducing you to the Breakthrough Creativity Framework and the eight creative talents and helping you better understand the many different ways you can be creative that I have given you some valuable new perspectives so that you can see the incredibly magical world of creativity with new eyes. Thank you very much for joining me today. I apologize for my voice because of my, create, my cough, but um, we now have some time, Sarah, for some questions and answers. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Lynn. Go ahead and use your question chat box to send in any um, questions that you have for Lynn. You can send those in now. Um, while we're taking some time here to capture all of those questions that come in, um, let me just go ahead and give you the little bit of information on the foundation of um, today's session. The Breakthrough Creativity Profile, as Lynn has mentioned, is an individual assessment, and it does come with three separate workshops, a general creativity session, it also has a team building focus, or a problem solving focus as well. And for joining us today, you can review the facilitator set for an exclusive 50% off, and that's 30 days risk-free. The set does include not only just the workshop materials, but it gives you the classroom PowerPoint presentations, theoretical background information as well. You can use the coupon code WebinarBCP at hrdqstore.com, and that works all the way through until April 30th. Okay, so it does look like when we have several questions that have come in, so let's go ahead and, um, and, and jump to those. Um, our first question here comes from Christine, and um, Christine asks, how does the right brain and left brain theory of creativity, how does that align or, or fit in sort of with um, your breakthrough creativity material? Uh, great question. 
um, the current research on the brain that has been done by neuroscientists indicate that in order to be fully creative, we need a whole brain approach. A lot of the research now is sort of um, uh, flying in the face of that right brain, left brain concepts. Um, we need both to be able to analyze on both sides of the brain. We need to be able to see different things on both sides of the brain. We need to access different parts of the brain. So um, that is number one. Number two is that the research that did come up with that originally was based upon a different definition of creativity. And thank you, Christine, for giving me the opportunity to say that when you look at creativity um, tests or uh, any other kinds of assessments, one of the things you really need to look at is what is the underlying definition of creativity. If, for example, your definition of creativity is just about coming up with ideas, you're going to score differently on a so, so an assessment um, than you would on one that has a totally inclusive definition of the many different ways that, that you can be creative. So I think that it's very important for you to understand what are the underlying research that produce the results that would say one thing or another about creativity. And as I said, the Breakthrough Creativity Profile is based upon, and it's the only profile that I know that is based upon this inclusive definition of creativity as the ability to produce different and valuable results, which encompasses both generating ideas and doing something with them. I hope that answered the question. Yes, great, thank you. Um, so we have uh, this question coming in a few different ways, so I'll, I'll sort of summarize it here. Judy, for the most part, kind of summarizes it the best for us. Um, but, but are there any um, uh, obstacles that may get in the way of, of, of being at your most creative, say? Oh, absolutely. And we could um, have a whole nother webinar about obstacles that get in the way of being creative. There are organizational obstacles um, that result from the culture in the organization, the leadership style in the organization, the lack of collaboration in the organization. Um, but I do tend, and, and there are also some personal ones. Culturally, you may not think of yourself as creative, um, but and you may have only read stories about men being creative versus all the women who have also been creative. But I do think that the the our our box our, we put ourselves in a bigger box than our organization or other issues do. We are our own worst enemy when it comes to being creative. We're afraid to be different. We're afraid to speak out and come up with different uh, opinions or to pursue a different course of action. And so I tend to think that our inner critic and our desire to be perfect is one of our biggest obstacles. But that's right. also a topic for a whole nother webinar. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Which I'm we'll happy talk. to do. <laughs> that's great. We'll talk about that. Good. Um, our next question here comes in from Julian. Um, and, and they ask, what kinds of practices would you recommend for people who want to develop, say, a, a different creative modality for either the data gathering or decision making? So um, what Julian is saying is, uh, you know, since, since these are kind of like muscles that they build through use, you know, are there any examples you could provide to help people, uh, you know, uh, build maybe a, a different creative strength? Ah, great question, Julian. Thank you very much. I love the, the um, analogy to muscles um, because, in effect, that is what, um, that what these talents are. We have all of these in, inside us, and um, we do just need to figure out which ones we prefer first and then get ac access the others. Um, I think one of the first things to do is to read through a little promotion here for getting the, either the participant <laughs> guide or the facilitator guide, but if you read through all the various different definitions, and in both the, the participant guide and the facilitator guide, there's a lot more um, detail to the different talents. So if you read through the detail of the different talents, you can see what things you might want to be able to access um, yourself. So for example, with not a lot of us showed that we were 
um, adventure talent had a lot of the adventure talent in us. So once you read more about the adventure talent, you find that they enjoy life, they love colors, um, they love textures. So I might suggest if you want to get in touch with your adventure talent, you go to a textile store. I mean, a, what do they call them? Textile stores. Um, where you buy fabric? different cloth, fabric stores, thank you, <laughs> and look at all the different buttons and the colors of the, the cloths, et cetera. Um, the same is true if you're trying to get in touch with your inventor talent. Maybe you want to do more puzzles and spend more time on, alone. Um, one of the things I noticed is that a lot of us tend to um, have more of an extroverted talent. Um, so one of the things you might want to do is, you know, spend more time alone, accessing some of those um, introverted talents, um, the ones that are more private. So I think getting it, access to the profiles or even my book will give you a lot more information about what you can do to, to access those. I hope that helps, Julian. Great. And uh, you can continue to send in your questions um, if we run out of time today to answer them live. Um, Lynn will answer all of those by email, and we'll actually then email all of the, re the questions and the responses out to everyone on the webinar. Uh, we'll send those out next week. So go ahead and continue to send in the questions. Um, we do have time for a few more. Um, our next question here, Lynn, comes from Bob. and. Um, and, and so he's, he's recognizing your definition of creativity, understands that piece of it, but is wondering sort of how, how you feel innovation fits into this puzzle. Well, um, as I think of innovation, I think of innovation as what organizations do. <clears throat> so people are creative. Innovation, I mean, organizations are innovative. Um, and. Or, Obviously, organizations need to organize their innovation processes, um, their approach, their incentives around innovation, all of, making sure they have a culture of innovation, all the maybe making sure their leaders are open to um, the create hearing the creativity of their employees, et cetera. So I think it's organizations are innovative and individuals are creative. I hope, Bob, that solves that or makes that clear. Great. Now, obviously, different companies are going to have different definitions. And I think as trainers and facilitators and consultants, it's very important to get at that definition and figure out, uh, be creative about how to use the eight creative talents within a company's definitions. Great. And um, Holly asks here, um, how did you come up with the name Breakthrough Creativity? <laughs> um, well, that's a very interesting question. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it came from a collaboration. We were sitting around once the book, uh, my book was, pub was getting ready to be published. Um, I sat around with some friends, all of whom have very different talents. And we explored different titles, and we came up with the title for Breakthrough Creativity, okay. which also then points out how important it is to have um, people around you who support you in your ideas and that also have different talents who can challenge your thinking. Um, and then you also need to be able to say, no, i got to go away and think about that. <laughs> Good. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Lynn, and thank you everyone on the line today. Continue to send in those questions, and Lynn will answer those. We'll get those all out uh, by email uh, early next week. We certainly appreciate everyone's time today, and we hope you found today's webinar informative. Yes, thank you, Cassara, and thank you to all of you who attended today. I look forward to your questions. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.